So here's that question, right, that we're going to ask. Why the difference? Why the difference? Well, there were a number of Western states that uh, got fed up with this. And they got together. And they began sending petitions and delegations and resolutions to Congress and making demands. And they said, look, you're not disposing of our land like you promised. We can't tax the land to educate our kids. We can't grow our economies and provide good paying jobs. And you're hoarding all of our minerals and resources. Does that sound familiar? That was Illinois. That was Dick Durbin's state of Illinois. And it was Missouri, and it was Louisiana, and it was Arkansas, and it was Alabama, and Mississippi, and Indiana, and of course that great western state way over there of Florida. Right, Florida, in their resolutions to the United States, it's on the website, you, the, the documents are on the American Lands Council website. That great western state of Florida said, we're worse off than all the western states, because you're not disposing of our land. The Illinois Resolution, please go on the website and read them. On the front page of the website, there are a bunch of quick facts. And quick fact number five, you can pull up the original documents and read them. They're right there. 90% federally controlled for decades. Illinois was. Missouri was. Right? Until one man, one man with courage, stood up. And in his words, he went to battle. With Senator... The Democratic senator from Missouri, Thomas Hart Benton. In fact, his courage was so legendary that John F. Kennedy featured him in his best-selling book, Profiles in Courage. Thomas Hart Benton, look at what he says. My election to, con to the Senate of the United States found me doing battle for an ameliorated system of disposing of our public lands. I resolved to move against the whole system. I did so in a bill renewed annually for a long time and in speeches which had more effect on the public mind than upon the federal legislation, knowledge and courage. Over and over and over again, members of Congress. How often do, unfortunately, we hear members of Congress say, you don't understand Washington, my dear boy. It's impossible. Knowledge and courage. One man. Did you notice today, if you look on your card, is Illinois 90% federally controlled? Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana? Less than five, significantly less than 5%. Imagine if one man had no knowledge and no courage and refused to do battle. And they were still 90% federally controlled today. Worse than Nevada. One man with knowledge and courage. The new states, new states, right? Illinois, Missouri, right? The new states of the West were sufferers by this federal land policy. Uh, if you look down here, the majority of Congress was less heedful of their wants and wishes. Does that sound familiar? Yes. They were as a stepmother instead of a natural mother, the federal government being the sole purchaser from foreign nations and the sole recipient of Indian sessions, it became the monopolizer of the, of the land, vacant lands in the West. And this monopoly, like all monopolies, resulted in a hardship. Does that sound familiar? Few or none of our public men raised their voice against this hard policy before I came into the National Councils. My own voice was soon raised there against it, and it is certain that a great amelioration has taken place in our federal land policy during my time, and that the sentiment of Congress and that of the public generally has become more liberal in land alienations. Knowledge and courage. But the members of Congress, and I would submit the members of the city councils, and the Board of Supervisors, and the state representatives, and the attorneys general, and the governors, and the members of Congress should not intermit their exertions nor vary their policy and should fix their eyes steadily upon the period of the speedy extinction of the federal title to all the lands within the limits of their respective states. It's been done before by Illinois, and by Florida, and by Alabama, and Mississippi, and Indiana. It's been done before. This isn't just ancient history, though. Remember Hawaii? This is the enabling act of Hawaii. Because the Hawaiians had knowledge, and they mobilized their courage, and refused to take no for an answer. And in their enabling act, it says that the United States grants to the state of Hawaii directly, effective upon its the United States title to all the public lands, title which is held by the United States immediately prior to its admission directly to the state. Michigan, 13 million acres were granted directly to the state of Michigan. Tennessee, here's all your land directly to the state. 
There's all sorts of different land grants. There was homesteading and, 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 and all, a whole variety of different grants. You see, the federal government's duty was to dispose of the land. Selling was just one way of disposing. Their duty was to dispose. If you can sell, sell, but you must dispose. You must extinguish title. And in many cases, directly to the state.